Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy. And in the last video, I gave you an introduction to using the Session Keyboard Player and leveraging it with the Chord Track. In this video, we're going to continue on with the Session Keyboard Player, and I'm going to show you how to swap out the Studio Piano Instrument for other third-party instruments. Or if you don't have any third-party instruments, that's totally okay. You can just use another Logic Keyboard Instrument like the Electric Piano, Clove, B3 Organ, Mellotron, or really any other Logic Software Synthesizer that is a polyphonic instrument. The keyboard player is the ultimate chord progression tool for creating a foundation for your compositions and can be used with any instrument, unlike the session bass player, which has some pretty unique articulations and key switches, which make it not necessarily that compatible with other software bass instruments. Before we get into the tutorial, I wanna quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video, Boombox. Boombox is transforming how musicians, bands, artists, producers, and other music industry professionals store, share, and collaborate on files. You can upload audio files, stems, mix bounces, and even full DAW sessions. Collaborators can add time-stamped feedback and voice recordings to tracks as well. Boombox also offers an extensive range of collaborative tools. This includes Boombot AI, an advanced virtual co-writer that can do stem extraction and can even generate MIDI ideas. Create your own custom artist page with your own logo and branding and discover new collaborators and clients on the Boombox web app or one of their mobile apps. Visit boombox.io today and sign up to get four gigabytes of free storage or upgrade to one of their paid plans for increased storage space and additional pro features. So let's say in the intro here, I don't want these block chords. I only want the piano uh, maybe right here in the chorus. Maybe I'll add it to the bridge too later. But for now, in the intro and the verse, I want something um, that's a completely different instrument, maybe an electric piano or a synth pad or something like that. So let's create a new session player, keyboard player. This time I'm going to use the simple pad and what this is going to do is it's actually going to just open up Retro Synth and uh, create a pad. And now the pad, by default, is just whole notes. So if you're looking for a way to take a chord progression that you've built up here and turn it into um, a MIDI region or turn it into a session player region and just have those chords, just by them, those raw chords by themselves, this is a great way to do that. And you can swap this out for any instrument you want. I'm actually going to remove all effects plugins. I'm gonna remove all sends, and I'm going to choose a third party instrument. Let's go with a contact instrument. And one of my favorite contact instruments here is Ignition Keys. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. And you can do this with any third party instrument. It doesn't have to be contact, or you can use it with any other logic instrument. You can use a stock preset from the library for example. And all of this is the simply said preset, but there are different uh, pad presets as well. Now, with all of these, these are pretty much all going to be whole notes, but these are just going to affect like the voicing of the chords. So maybe we want to start there. It's kind of creepy sounding almost. And then here, let's switch over to another preset. So the simple pad is very simple. <laughs> There's just an intensity slider. There's no complexity slider. You can turn on or off the left or right hands. You can adjust the range of the left and right hands. Just like with the session keyboard player, you can adjust the voicing of the left hand and the voicing of the right hand. And you can also choose to tie notes from either the right hand, left hand, or both, or turn it off. You can also adjust the note start point. So if you pull this back, you'll see that it pulls back the start point of the chord. If 
you pull it forward, it pulls it a little bit forward. So if you're using like an instrument that has a really slow attack time, you can actually pull the note start forward and this will allow the like the full volume of uh, the chord to come in right on the bar line. So you're actually coming in a little bit early, but you're just waiting for that slow attack to come in uh, like a lot of synth pads have. Uh, you can also adjust the note length. So do you want overlapping notes or do you want notes that have no overlap and have a bit of a gap in between them? Uh, that's how you can control that here. And you can also add swing, but there are no other controls beyond that. Let's pull this region over here. And what I'm gonna do here for the pre-chorus is I'm actually gonna switch over to a different keyboard player. The thing is, I wanna make sure that I turn off change patch because I wanna keep this same contact patch that I'm using. I just wanna switch over to the arpeggiated keyboard player. So that's what's really cool here is the session player style or type is within the region. You can have multiple different session player types on the same track as long as you don't change the patch. Because otherwise it's gonna, you know, if I had that change patch option uh, turned on, what's gonna happen is it's gonna swap out contact for the, the piano instrument again, which I don't want. Put this in a little higher range. And there we go. Now I have keys, piano, bass, shakers, and auxiliary percussion and drums in my musical arrangement. And I've got the start of a backing track here that I can write lyrics to. I can, you know, perform my own guitars or my own ins other instruments on this track. Um, and that's really what session players are great for. They're great for getting ideas out there quickly, creating chord progressions, and creating a backing track to start writing to. I don't think anyone's going to make the argument that you should just use session players as is. I mean, you certainly can if you want. But, you know, if you want to make things a bit more original, I would highly recommend going into each one of these and fully customizing uh, the sounds and customizing uh, the MIDI as well. And we're gonna get to that later on in the course. Okay, so that wraps up the session keyboard player. In the next video, we're gonna move on to some song building and arrangement things uh, that have more to do with the chord track and the arrangement of the song as a whole rather than with the session players. Uh, but again, these are all things that work together, so you can't talk about one without the other. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support, and thanks for watching.